Hello friends, welcome to a brand new tutorial in Network Analysis and Synthesis. In today's tutorial, we'll talk about introduction to network synthesis. And this can be thought of as a beginner's lesson for all those who wish to excel in network synthesis. We'll talk about differences between network analysis and network synthesis. We'll take up some uh, beginner's example to synthesize networks. We'll take up the fundamentals and the prerequisites which are required to do network synthesis. So let's get straight into this. It's very important to understand the difference between the two key terms network analysis and network synthesis. If you've been watching my previous videos in the playlist, uh, we were solving a lot of networks um, in order to find the currents in the networks branch or in order to find the uh, power in a specified branch. Now, when the network is given and input or excitation is given and where it, the aim is to find the output that thing is known as network analysis on the contrary if a network function is given so this can be thought of as an exactly opposite process if a network function is given and please understand a network function is the ratio of input or output variables and the aim is to synthesize or find the network so this is exactly the reverse process we've been given with let us say a driving point impedance and we've been asked to find the components of the networks not the quantity like the voltage drop or the current or the power but uh, we need to find out the values of the resistances capacitances and the inductors used in the network to formulate that network so this is exactly the opposite process of network analysis in a way typically uh, you'll find questions like this a network will be given and you'll be asked to find the current through a specified branch or the power across this 5 ohm resistor for this network and on the other hand typically you'll find questions like this you'll be given a driving point impedance function and you'll be asked to realize the network the third point of difference is that it 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 has a unique solution um, I have some videos where I solve a network using five different techniques and in all those techniques I get exactly the same answer because the solution to the problem in a network analysis domain is unique and in network synthesis the solution may not be uh, unique and the last point of difference could be uh, the techniques which are used to analyze the network are KCL, KVL, superposition, Norton's, Thevenin's, maximum power transfer theorem, reciprocity theorem, etc. And the techniques used here are RC networks, RL networks, Foster's 1, 2 form, Kyer 1, 2 forms, etc. So there are some prerequisites in terms of the concepts that you need to uh, have already in your basket in order to start network synthesis the first one is you need to understand what is a positive real function so i've got a separate video you could watch that l becomes ls in uh, laplace domain c becomes one upon cs and r remains the same and then you need to know the admittance and impedance functions driving point functions transfer functions and so on and so forth concepts of network synthesis so let's begin with the concepts of network synthesis and then we'll slowly progress towards solving a few questions the first concept is that um, if we've been given with some function uh, let us say this is the impedance function it could be a driving point impedance function for a one port network we know that this could be uh, segregated into uh, two impedances z1s and z2s and they could be arranged like this in a network and similarly for uh, admittance function uh, we could have you know our total admittance total driving point admittance divided into two parts and they are arranged like this in parallel so the two impedances are arranged in series to get the driving point impedance function and two admittances are arranged in parallel and next uh, we talk about the concept of removal of pole if we have found z1s then um, 
z2s can be found by subtracting z1s from zs right and uh, the poles of z1s are removed from zs in order to find z2 of course now this concept is more of a theoretical concept and it makes sense when we get to the next point which says that the removal of pole at infinity so this is one condition so how do we find that out this is very very important let's understand this let us say we have an impedance function z of s and it has a pole at infinity so what does this infer it means it simply means that if the numerator polynomial of zs is degree in the denominator then we can safely say that uh, we have a pole at infinity so an example of this could be this function where we have the numerator polynomial it is greater than the denominator polynomial now for a prf function we know that there needs to be three zeros and three poles and we can see only two poles here one pole is at minus one one pole is at minus five and similarly uh, there are three zeros one zero is at is equal to zero and then minus two and minus three so there must be one pole lying at infinity that we cannot see we can only see two poles here one at minus one at one at uh, minus five and there are three zeros and in order uh, for this system to be stable there should be uh, equality between number of poles and zeros so uh, we can safely say that one pole is lying at infinity that we cannot see here so when the numerator polynomial is great is greater than one degree than the uh, denominator polynomial then we can say that uh, there is a pole at infinity and you know s segregating that pole out from the main function is known as removal of pole at infinity as i mentioned earlier it is more of a theoretical concept and when we do numerical you'll find that it does not make much sense um, in the actual implementation and uh, when such a case happens when uh, the degree of uh, numerator is one greater than the degree of uh, polynomial at denominator if we apply long uh, division method we'll see that this this impedance function will get segregated into two parts one will become h of s and the second uh, part will have um, a function which which has the degree in the numerator to be equivalent to the degree in the denominator so if you look at uh, this segregation so we can say that uh, this function is now split up into two parts z1s and z2s and z1s if we compare this with hs and we apply that knowledge of uh, laplace transformation we can say that the first uh, component is impedance and its impedance is uh, l so the value of l becomes equivalent to h because h of s represents an inductive uh, element in the first impedance uh, part when we segregate such a function where the degree of numerator is one greater than the degree of denominator we'll get uh, the first element to be inductive if we are talking about um, impedance parameters secondly we have the concept of removal of pole at zero it is also similar to that of removal of pole at infinity but the difference is the denominator polynomial is now one greater than that of the numerator polynomial so again more of a theoretical concept where the function will assume a form like this so we can see that there are two zeros at minus one and minus two and there are three poles so i can say that oh, you know one pole is at zero in order to compensate the differences between the number of poles and zero so again a very very theoretical concept again by ordinary long division of such a uh, function where the degree of numerator is one less than 
that of the denominator will get two uh, parts the first part will be k not upon s and the second part will have the same degree in the numerator and the same degree in the denominator so just by looking at the first part we'll see that the first element now becomes a capacitor so if uh, we get such a case uh, we get z1s as k not upon s and value of capacitor becomes 1 upon k and this is what is known as the removal of pole because we need to find this value which is z2s so this can now be easily found by subtracting uh, z1s from zs and that is what was happening here also we could easily find z2s because z1 is now known because z1 is a singular element which is inductor in this case and a capacitor in this case so let's take up an example to understand this more clearly now this this is an example of removal of pole at infinity at this point in time i'd like to mention this again that this is kind of a misnomer it does not have an actual implementational uh, effect on the so solution of the problem a driving point impedance function is given like this so this falls under the first category where the numerator polynomial has one degree greater than the denominator polynomial so by ordinary long division i can segregate this function into two parts the first part becomes s in this case and the second part becomes 2s upon s square plus 2 now if we compare the first part to z1s we clearly see that the value of the inductor the value of the first impedance comes out to be 1 so this is pretty straightforward that uh, the removal of uh, the removal of pole at infinity means that we found the value of z1 which is the first impedance and that impedance is inductive in nature and its value is 1 henry now we are left with finding z2s that we need to connect in series with z1s to find total z of s and that will completely synthesize our network and in order to find z2s again we do not need to necessarily uh, subtract z1s from zs because we have been given with the value of z2s so we can apply a simple trick that trick involves the finding of z2s using y2s because we know that z is equal to 1 upon y so if i find 1 upon y i can simply find the network for z so this is a super super important trick where i find the admittance so i have i am finding the admittance which is exactly the reciprocal of this one and if I take admittance to be equivalent to s square plus 2 upon 2s which is reciprocal of z to s and I split that up into two parts now splitting that up into two parts give me one component as s by 2 and the other component as 1 by s and the component s by 2 clearly says that it's a capacitive component with the capacitor value 1 by 2 farad and 1 by s clearly shows me that it's an inductive element with with inductor value 1 henry so if i draw y2 in totality there'll be these two components component 1 and component 2 in parallel so the component 1 is 1 by 2 farad a capacitive component and the component 2 is an inductive component of 1 henry the total uh, network becomes this 1 henry in series with this z2 impedance now please understand this z2 impedance was drawn very very cleverly by taking y2 so we we did not draw z2 directly we took y2 and we we took y2 as the reciprocal of z2 and then drew it and i hope this tutorial was of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more updates. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.